What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is new release review where I'm going to talk about 310 to Yuma, The Fog, and also Real Genius. If you're brand new here on my channel and you love to adore physical media and everything to do with movies, then hit that red subscribe down below as well as that like button, but most importantly that small notification bell so you don't miss any videos like this in the future. So let's start off this review with 310 to Yuma. I'm going to show off the steel book and I want to get this review in because 310 to Yuma actually came out as a new release a couple of weeks ago. So I am a little bit behind with this one. So that's why she's going first. I got to show 310 to Yuma a little bit of extra love. All right. So here is the steel book looking amazing as always. There it is with the slip cover. There is the back with the slip looking very nice. And then obviously without the slip, check out that cover art amazing it looks fantastic so definitely worth your money if you are looking for 310 to yuma i do recommend getting it just based on the cover artwork this steel book is beautiful lionsgate killing it as always so let's get into the review of this film now i gotta be honest and you guys already know this about me if you have been fans of me fans of this channel you watch the videos you already know Westerns is not my favorite genre of film. For some reason, me and Westerns just do not click. I feel the same way about war movies. It just doesn't happen for me. If I can delay watching a Western or a war film, I will, I will wait. I will wait the longest time. I will put it on the back burner for an extra long time. But I really wanted to give 310 to Yuma a chance. Now, I believe this film was originally done a long time ago. So I believe this one is a remake or a reboot of 310 to Yuma. This is directed by James Mangold. I'm finding that every time I watch a James Mangold film, I'm just really enjoying what he's doing. The content, the movies that he decides to put out, that he decides to direct and give his vision to, I really respond to them and I really enjoy them. And I'm going to say the same exact thing about 310 to Yuma. Surprisingly enough, I really enjoyed this movie. So what is it about? Very quick synopsis. So Russell Crowe's in this film, also Christian Bale. I enjoy them both. I think they're both extremely talented, but this is really is an all-star cast. You have tons of other stars in this, but those are the main two. Now, Russell Crowe is an outlaw and he has his gang of thieves and he's very much a wanted man and they do end up capturing him. Hence the title of the movie. They want to put him on a 310 train to Yuma for prison or to be hanged, what have you. I'm not really sure what they're going to do with him, but they capture him. They got to put him on this train. Now, his gang of thieves are doing anything and everything possible to get him back. They obviously don't want him to die. Now, where does Christian Bale fit into all of this? Well, the people that do capture Russell Crowe, Christian Bale needs some money. So he offers to help the people transport Russell Crowe onto this train. He's going to get like $200 or something, which back then was probably like 50 grand. I don't know. So $200, a lot of money to him. He needs this. Otherwise he's going to lose his land. He's going to lose his house, everything. So he needs this to, to happen. He's got to get Russell Crowe on the train. And that's what the movie is all about pretty much. And I highly, highly enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought it was going to. I pretty much stayed awake for the entire movie. There was a couple spots where I'm like, meh, but I was up again right away. I wasn't out for like a half hour at a time. Trust me. So I really enjoyed 310 to Yuma. If you guys have not seen it, give it a chance. And I know this film kind of divides the movie audience because I had heard in the past that this movie is boring and that a lot of people did not enjoy it. And I don't really think it made that much money at the box office either, but give it a chance for like a $20 steel book. I believe you can pick this up for watch it. I do highly recommend it. Now, as far as the 4k transfer goes, it was a decent one to me. It was, it didn't overly impress me by any means, but it wasn't a horrible transfer. I thought it was just fine the way it was. They get, they did a good job with it. So I do highly recommend 310 to Yuma. Who knew? 
I guess I'm liking Westerns. Is this a new thing? I don't know. Probably not. Let's move on. Let's move on to the fog. So I was looking forward to this one. Obviously I've never seen it directed by John Carpenter and you know, I'm dedicated to watching all of John Carpenter's work. I'm really loving him and his directing style. So that's part of the reason why I really wanted to pick this up. I was excited when they announced it. It was coming to 4K. I'm like, ooh, I'm going to see it for the first time on 4K. So super excited about that. Now, what is the plot of The Fog? If you guys have never seen it. So this town is celebrating their 100 year anniversary or something. But what people don't realize is that it's kind of also the anniversary of this ship that wrecked in the fog and pretty much everyone died. And so what happens in this movie is the dead mariners in the fog are coming back for revenge. And that's pretty much what the whole movie is about. However, I am going to say the one big negative for me is that I wanted more of the dead mariners coming back for revenge. I wanted more of that. Don't get me wrong. There were a couple of scenes here and there where they were getting their revenge and they were doing what they wanted to do. But I wasn't overly frightened by this movie. There wasn't anything where I was like, oh my God, and it was just out of control and crazy. There was no moments like that. There was a lot of downtime. And I think the reason for that is because there was a lot of characters in this film. And if you enjoy the Halloween franchise, then you're really gonna love this movie because pretty much every star that's ever been in Halloween or been a part of Halloween has something to do with this movie. What do I mean by this? Okay, directed by John Carpenter, produced by John Carpenter, also Deborah Hill. Obviously, she was involved in Halloween. John Carpenter also has a very quick cameo in the very beginning of this movie. I was like, hey, that's John Carpenter. Obviously, Jamie Lee Curtis. Hello, Laurie Strode. So John Carpenter using her yet again in another film. Then we have Tom Atkins, who is the male lead in Halloween 3, is in this film. Janet Lee, who we obviously know from Psycho and also Jamie Lee's mother. But on top of that, she was in Halloween H2O. But not only that, to top it all off, the woman that plays Annie in the original Halloween is also in this film. Where's Danielle Harris? She's the only one that we could possibly need to put in this movie. And I think the Halloween franchise would be completely represented in one film. So that was a lot of fun to see. All these people that were in the Halloween franchise in the same movie, that was a lot of fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm not dogging on this film. I'm not saying it's a bad movie. It's a decent movie, but I gotta be honest. When I'm like pulling something off the shelf, if I'm in the mood for something, the fog is not going to be the first choice for me. If I'm watching something on Halloween night, I'm pulling Halloween. That's automatic. I'm not going to go for the fog, but I enjoyed it. It's a little slow. If it was a little bit more creepy and just a little bit more bloody, it's not a slasher. If you're going for a slasher movie, the fog is not it. Because of the slower pace, it does take it down, and that's not going to be for everyone. I got to be honest, but also at the same time, you kind of get this comfort. It's also a comfort movie at the same time, which is so weird for me to say that, but I don't know if it's because of the atmosphere, the ambiance, the fog and everything, but I was wrapped up in my blanket and I was enjoying what I was watching. I just wanted more revenge, I guess. I just wanted more blood. I wanted more scenes. I guess I just wanted more slasher in general. But overall, I enjoyed The Fog for what it was. Maybe I'll appreciate it more in time in the future upon future rewatches. Who knows? You never know. Opinions change all the time. But I am happy that I finally have it on 4K. And the 4K transfer on this is not consistent. I will say that when it looks the best is when you're focused on a house in the broad daylight, right on the sea. It's gorgeous. And it's a perfect 4k transfer, perfect 4k transfer, excuse me. But then there's other parts where it's just still a little wonky, could have been a little bit better, but I still do recommend if you absolutely love and adore John Carpenter, 
then you're going to want to get this in your collection. And I'm happy that I chose the slipcover versus the steel book. I'm enjoying the slipcover. I like Jamie Lee on the front, all frightened of the dead mercenary come to get her. So I don't know. I just, I like the slip. I like the slip. Am I turning into a slipcover girl? I don't know. But the fog, I do recommend if you love John Carpenter. The last movie I will discuss is Real Genius. I rewatched this last night for the first time in, I don't know, probably 20, 25 years. This is total, total nostalgia for me because I do remember watching this when I was probably 12 or 13 years old and maybe I had a crush on Val Kilmer. I don't know, but this movie some, for some reason just had my attention. So Real Genius is all about, you guessed it, geniuses. It focuses on a 15 year old boy who gets accepted to an accelerated program in college and he ends up being the roommate of Val Kilmer's character whose IQ is pretty much off the charts. He's unbelievably smart. All of them are smart but Val Kilmer's character especially is like super smart. So they get assigned this project by this professor and he needs this done. They need him to work on it. Obviously, he's not smart enough to pull it off himself. So he gets his students to do it for him. But unfortunately, what they do not realize is that they're actually working on a secret weapon for the government. And then once they realize what they're doing, what they've done, they they try to, they try to, uh, how, do, how do I say this? They try to, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to record this video all over again. I'm doing such a good job. They try to undo what they did. There we go. So Real Genius, it's a great film because it's an 80s classic movie. It's not your typical like like school movie. I was gonna say back to school movie, but it's not back to school. It's not your typical like education movie. It's not your typical college film. Those are all about like fitting in and yeah, that's in here, but there's many layers to real genius. It's about being in school. It's about being overly smart. Maybe a little bit of love found here and there in the movie. There's a lot of stuff going on in the film. It's not just focused in one direction, which I think I really like about this movie because other films in the 80s are not like that. But this one takes it in, in a different direction and it's a pleasure to watch and I'm so happy it's on 4K because this transfer is the best. Out of the three that I watched in this video, Real Genius 4K Transfer, if you're going to buy any of these, I recommend strongly Real Genius. The 4K transfer on this is impeccable. It's one of the best of the year. It is amazing. So what can I say? Buy Real Genius. Buy all of them. So that is my quick review and quick thoughts about The Fog, 310 to Yuma, and also Real Genius. Overall, do I recommend them to you? Yes, I do. There really isn't any of them that I hate and none of them where I'm like, yeah, you can pass. Maybe you can wait for a sale for a couple of them, but overall, definitely add them into your collection. So thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you leave and I'll see you next time.